Unless you never leave your home, you can't miss it. <laughs> Graffiti covering freeway walls and so much more. Seeing the extent of the problem would lead most people to believe it's being ignored by the city. Not true. Are you making a dent, do you feel? Yes. Yes, we do. Meet Portland police officers Nathan Kirby Glatkowski and Amelia Floor. A spot that used to be getting cleaned all the time isn't anymore. It's suddenly an explosion of graffiti that we can all notice. On this day, they're on graffiti duty, hoping to track down those responsible for littering our city with paint. Yeah, he's still fighting. Can we get another unit or two, please? But that's not all they do. Sounds great. Jackson's going to cut through, right? Oh, they're over there. He said he's going to continue to fight. Okay. All right. He's in some type of psychosis, just so you guys know. All right. Before we even head out on the graffiti trail, they're called to assist on a man assaulting someone near Portland State University. <laughs> it's typical for a police bureau that's short staffed. No, we're going to try to just deadlift this guy. All right, hang on. One, One two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Soon we're back on the road. Obviously, we're still in uniform. We're listening to the radio. And we are also responding and augmenting and assisting patrol, as you saw this morning. So that can sometimes swallow an entire day. Some of these folks are doing the graffiti at, it could be any given time, frankly. Most of it is at night. Most of it is early in the morning when it's dark and, and there are less people out. Certainly some of these folks are very emboldened. Taggers want to be up. Kirby Glatkowski and Floor are part of the neighborhood response team. Each precinct has one, kind of the Swiss army knife for the police bureau. Floor was hired right out of college, while Kirby Glatkowski worked in nuclear weapons disarmament prior to joining the police force. They're determined to make a dent, especially after the Bureau's graffiti task force was cut in 2015. I think as that team went away, less and less of a concerted approach on graffiti existed. And so patrol, of course, they still stopped graffiti guys in the act. They still made arrests. Um, but actually going out there and seeking the worst offenders wasn't really happening. Until now. The pandemic and civil unrest saw a significant uptick in the amount of graffiti on the streets. Frankly, we had an explosion of graffiti in the city. These two spend hours upon hours tracking down the most prolific graffiti offenders and building cases on them. But we do have Geo Metro there and Geo Metro there, which should be going to grand jury next week. And they're turned over to the district attorney for prosecution. It's not just, oh, you got caught doing one act a misdemeanor, here's your charge. Um, that's been shown again and again and again to not really deter graffiti vandals. They appear to just kind of keep going if that happens, if they get handed a ticket. And so our way was, how do we find the most impactful folks, the people that are doing hundreds of these tags a year, and then make them realize that like, you need to stop, this is serious, and, um, and there uh, is a there's a consequence, exactly. And they are making progress. In the last couple of years, they've busted seven or eight big cases and many more small ones. When you see more graffiti, it's not necessarily because the vandals are more active. Many times it's because of a gap in funding for ODOT and PBOT. ODOT handles the freeways, PBOT the city. Once you start looking for graffiti, before I started this part of my job with Kirby, I would notice it, but it wasn't something that I was particularly on the lookout for. Now that it is part of my job and something that I do find interesting at work, um, I see it absolutely everywhere. You can't unsee it once you know what you're looking for. But does the constant painting and repainting over graffiti really make a difference? These two say yes, that if you paint over it every three months, not so much because the taggers want to be visible. If a wall gets or cleaned every day, then you're way less likely to have a tagger come back there because why put all that effort into that spot when they could go somewhere else and be up for a longer period of time. So what is it about graffiti that bothers us so much? Kirby Gladkowski says others involved in criminal activity are emboldened by seeing all the graffiti, an appearance of a lack of accountability. And there's this. Uh, it really bothers a lot of our citizens that graffiti is up. 
uh, makes them feel more scared that there's more crime um, and seeing that every day has a big impact on people. So having, um, doing, helping out on uh, mitigating that feels good. These two say that between 50 and 100 people are doing most of the graffiti, the high frequency taggers, with a few hundred more doing the rest. Some come from out of town just to tag here in Portland. They hook up with local taggers, they get shown the spots, they go out, they do graffiti. And so I think a significant portion of the graffiti in our city is not even done by, by local residents, it's done by out of towners. They point to the massive effort by a number of partnerships in the city to battle the graffiti problem, including business owners, business associations, and volunteers. They know it'll take more than a brush stroke or two to clean things up, but keep this in mind. If graffiti is your thing, officers Amelia Floor and Nathan Kirby Gladkowski are likely headed your way. If you are extremely impactful and very prominent and you are out most nights doing this graffiti, you're going to be on our list and we're going to come and hold you accountable for that. Steve Dunn, K2 News.